Okay, this video is brought to you by the lovely people over at Squarespace who are helping me to continue offering free content and advice. So if you just want to show off your artwork online or start a new business venture, then you can make it with Squarespace. Okay, so it's now December in the UK. We don't quite have snowy weather just yet, but it's on the build up to Christmas. So I'm kind of thinking in terms of creating a nice winter scene. We're not quite in the depths of winter yet, so I still want to keep it kind of like a nice warm, maybe a sunset in snow. I think I'm going to get some trees into the scene as well. So if you're familiar with my tutorials, you'll know that I do provide the color codes. So in Procreate, if you go to the, the value section under the colors, there is what's called a hexadecimal code. And all these codes I'm going to provide in the description of the video itself. So all you need to do is type them in this space, press return, and then it should give you the color up here, and then you can start to piece together your own color palette. I've opened an A4 canvas. It's one of the default settings within Procreate, and in, I'm going to use mainly airbrush. I'm not too bothered about textures. If you want to play around with different textural effects with different brushes, then go for it yourself. But I'm just trying to get the overall essence, the kind of the sense of the colors and light and composition. And to do that, I find that the airbrush is perfectly adequate. So going back to my color palettes, I've created three sort of distinct color ranges. We've got the sky colors up at the top. Then we've got the kind of land, the snow colors. Although they might not seem like snow colors, you'll see how I'm going to use them later on. And then we've got three colors here that is mainly to do with the trees themselves. So the first thing we're going to do on layer one, I'm going to start creating a sky. And I'm going to go with the first color. I've got a darker blue. I say it's a darker blue. On the color range that I've got, it's the darker blue, but it is still quite a light blue. So I'm on the soft air brush. I'm going to turn the size of the brush down, keep the opacity quite low. And I'm just going to build in sort of sweeps of color here going across. I feel like I've extended that too far down. So that's easily fixed. All I need to do is just squash that down a bit, move it up. And now we've got it more concentrated towards the top. The next color I have is a slightly lighter blue and I'm gonna use this for the next section down. And I've got a little bit of a fade going in anyway, but this is just going to further help that kind of transition. So rather than over relying upon the kind of blending of colors, we actually have a change of color and it has a slightly different hue anyway. It's almost got a little bit more sort of a greeny tinge to it. And that's going to come down. The next color along is an even warmer color. So I'm going to use that around the kind of horizon points of my scene and just lightly blend that in as well. This whole bottom section is gonna be land and snow. So I'm not too worried about that. I might go back to my middle color, just try and mix that in a little bit more. And then I'm gonna go along to my other colors. Probably need to reduce the size of the brush now because the real kind of warm areas are gonna be slightly thinner. Maybe turn the size, the opacity of the brush down somewhat. I want to be just a little bit more gradual with this color, not overkill it. Definitely want quite a lot of warmth down on the horizon line, but it's better to build it up a little piece at a time. Now, some of these colors are probably gonna be made by mixing these colors together anyway, but I think rather than over relying upon the mixing of colors, it's quite useful to just have them in your color palette to begin with. like that. Then the next color along is a really quite vivid, intense orangey yellow. And just at the very bottom, I'm going to have that coming into effect. And then we have a kind of peachy, or sort of a pinky color. And again, I'm going to turn the strength of that way down. And that's just going to appear right at the very horizon down at the bottom there. Now I'm going to create another layer because that's the essential kind of colors that I'm going to need. I've got a lot of white down at the bottom here that is gonna be a little distracting. So on this second layer, I'm just gonna to go to my snow colors and I'm gonna pick the darkest color and just fill in, turn the opacity up. It's gonna look rather dark and intense now, but you'll get the idea later on. I just need it as my point of contrast, just to really understand the sense of light that's being created in the sky there. I might also go for the next color along and I'm probably going to create another section of blue. I'll come back to that later. I'm gonna go back to thinking about the sky. I'm gonna create another layer for this though. So I've got layer one is the sky, layer two is just a band of land in a, at the moment, so to speak. And the third layer I'm gonna use for some details going back into the sky. So again, I'm going to use the sky colors. I'm going to use the yellow, the pale yellow, and the kind of 
pinky peachy kind of color. I'm going to use the yellow color first, turn the opacity way down, and I just want to create some kind of patchy areas in the sky, some slight cloud that's just going to pick up the, the sunlight. So imagine we have the kind of sun in this area. Probably going to have the sun pretty much obscured by the, the trees, but we're certainly going to see the effect of the sun on the atmosphere and the clouds. Not that there's much of them, but So because I've got the opacity quite low, I don't need to be too precious. I don't need to worry about making too many mistakes. I'm not pressing on hard. I'm just trying to get some patchy areas into the sky so it looks a bit more broken. I'm gonna to change to the peach color. And again, I'm going to use this color. So some of that warmth that's in the horizon is gonna reflect off the clouds. So I'm gonna introduce some more of that warm color in the, in the sky as well. So I'm alternating between the two colors. If I go back to my colors, I'm gonna use that peach color again. And I may even have some bands of clouds that interrupt here further away. Maybe some large sections of clouds that come and sort of eat into the horizon there. Maybe a couple of those. I'm gonna go back to the lightest of the yellow colors and maybe just use that to just add a bit more of the light in this area. I'm going to create a bit more of a kind of radius, a bit of a glow coming from that area. I feel like I've got too much over here, so I'm gonna use palest of the blues just to sort of dampen that down a bit. I'm probably going to do some trees over here anyway but I think it pays just to get the, the atmosphere looking right to begin with. Probably going to use that blue just to mix it with the, the colour here as well just to uh, darken up the edges of that cloud. Back to the peach colour. Most of the sky I'm thinking is going to be obscured anyway. Okay, so that'll do for the sky. For now, I'm going to create another layer and I'm going to create a band of, of dark horizon line on here. So these are the colors I've got for the land. I'm going to go for the purple this time, I think. I think in the distance, it's going to mix with that blue and it's gonna create a kind of fusion between the blue and the warmer colors. And you'll see some purples coming out on the horizon there. to go for the darker blue. I'm just going to use that to really pick out a darker area on the horizon. In fact, I'm going to create another color that I didn't previously have, and I'm going to make it just a slightly darker blue. And I'm going to add that to the range of colors here. I'm just going to plonk it on the end. I think I just need to have that a touch darker on the actual horizon itself. Sometimes you start with a, a color range and you think you've got a fairly good idea of the kind of colors you're going to use but it's only when you start putting them next to each other that you can appreciate the the real value of them the weight of colors the intensity so i'm going to use this color in fact and i'm going to start adding some distant trees in here so i've got kind of a horizon line but I'm going to start creating a sense that there's some landscape features like trees going on here. So it's breaking that horizon line. So I'm not being at all precious about this. I'm just creating shapes, mounds and spikes in the distance. slightly wider at one side I think maybe slightly wider at this side too so we get a bit of a thinning in the center area now I'm gonna to go to my slightly paler blues here I'm gonna to go to the palest one and I think I want something of a contrast between the darker of the blues and maybe a light blue here as well 
Now, previously, these colors looked almost ludicrously dark when you're trying to suggest that they're going to be the color of snow. But when you put it in context and you put it next to other very rich or vibrant colors, then sometimes what can might appear in isolation as a unsuitable color can become much more suited. So I'm trying to create just sort of bands of this blue color now. So I'm allowing breaks in the, the snow here. I'm going to switch to the other blue color as well, which is primarily the blue actually that I've got for the background. So maybe what I need to do is introduce some of the darker blue and to have some breaks in this as well. The next feature that's going to really start to make sense of the scene is uh, the trees or the tree line. So I'm going to create another layer. There's going to be quite a few layers on this. It's not going to be a vast amount, but there is definitely going to be quite a few layers. So I'm going to move to the middle color on my tree color. I'm going to use just three colors predominantly. These are now going to be some of the colors that stick out. I'm going to be quite rough with these. I'm just I'm drawing texture. A lot of people like the idea of using particular textured brushes to create effects, but I mean, you can probably hear from the tapping that I prefer to do things by hand. I don't think it's difficult to create textures. It takes a little bit longer, but I usually take a lot more pride in the effects when I've actually created it myself. You might find that you annoy people immediately when you're around you, but I'm willing to take that risk. So I'm just creating some tree trunks that go straight up or lean perhaps even, and then I'm creating some dappled kind of texture near the top to suggest some foliage still on the tree. Maybe it's snow that's gathered up in the branches. Maybe there's not really any leaves left, but to replace the leaves, we have snow. I'm gonna create some taller ones just at the fringe here at the, uh, at the edge. Now this won't stand up to close scrutiny. I'm creating effects rather than very precise details. Now, it's not to say that you couldn't zoom in after you're creating the general effect, but I, I prefer to get the, the look right first, and then if necessary, work in detail. What I find is if you start at this level and obsess with the tiny details to begin with, then you've really set in stone the level of detail that you'll need for the entire piece. And then it, it can just become an incredibly laborious process and doesn't necessarily make for a better painting either. I think there's a balance to be struck. And I think as long as you can see it as a whole, and it works on that level, that's probably how it's going to be viewed the majority of the time. Now, if you're gonna produce something you know is gonna be blown up really massive, then you may wish to get into a bit more detail. But for this particular piece, I'm just creating the effect, like I said previously. So I'm quite happy with the zoomed out look. I'm just gonna spend a few more minutes getting some of these distant trees in. Okay, so you'll notice on the color range that I've got for the land, I've got quite a few extreme vibrant colors here. Um, I've got a nice purple, a kind of ready pink, and then a softer pink as well, as well as the blue that I added on the end there as well. I'm going to start using some of these colors now and mixing them in. So we've got a purple color that I'm going to mix in. So the, the canopy areas here, just softly introducing that color. Turn the opacity down. I don't want to go overboard with this again. Just want to create a hint of that coming through. I'm definitely going to need to start to use the red now as well. In fact, I'm going to go back a layer. I'm 
going to go to the layer that held all the texture details in the cloud and I'm going to start introducing that red just behind some of these details now. In fact, I'm going to have to do it on the layer above as well. It's one of the problems with using lots of layers. They can be really useful for separating different components of your painting, but you do have to keep track of what you've done where. I want to really get some warm colours coming into this centre area. Okay, um, what I'm going to do, yet another layer, I'm going to put this on top and I'm going to start using the colours down here and I'm going to place in some trees at this point. Now just to check my brushes, I'm going to change to a medium brush. These are going to be quite sharp by contrast to everything else. And I'm going to start placing some trees into the scene. So maybe start with some thinner trees initially in the distance. So for this particular tree, I'm going to have it a little bit wider at the bottom, but it's still going to be quite a, a thin tree, really quite skinny. And then it's going to branch off quite a lot towards the top. But these are going to be pretty thin, a lot paler than the main trunk itself. Now this is going to really, by using silhouettes, really going to contrast very much with the background. This is pretty much what's going to create the drama of the piece. Because up until this point, especially when you see it on the iPad rather than on the screen, you will know that the colours are quite pastel, not particularly strong, whereas this is going to really set them off. I'm just going to place in the trees initially, and then I can come back and start adding any texture to that, any kind of foliage or, or finer branches even. I'm going to create some more trees here. As they get closer to you, the viewer, then the trees are going to get taller, so they might go off the edge, but they're also going to get nearer to you on the ground as well. So they're going to be big in, in both top of the screen and bottom. So anything nearer the horizon that gets smaller is going to be shorter and higher up on the, the land side. You can see here, anything that's closer is going to start lower down and it might even go off the screen as well. Going to turn the opacity of this up, especially on these slightly nearer trees, they're going to be the darkest of the blacks. Maybe turn the size of the brush up slightly. Maybe we've got a cluster of trees here all together. that stick up from the snow. Here and now I'm going to turn the opacity up, turn the size of the brush down, get some little twigs that stick out. Now I'm going to go back into the trees and I'm going to start creating more of the branches. This is going to be quite time consuming. There's no way around it really. Sometimes there just isn't a quick fix for this type of detail and you just have to start adding them in. You could copy certain trees. So for example, I'm on a layer here, I could duplicate it, I could then flip a layer and I could start to use bits of them amongst what I've already created. But you just got to be very careful not to make the sense of symmetry too obvious. I'm going to get rid of that layer. And that, again, could be done once you actually get to the branches stage too. 
One thing when you're drawing branches is that when a branch leaves a thicker area, it should always get thinner and then another branch leaves that again, or it branches off so to speak, then every time it branches off it should get thinner. What you need to be careful of is that you don't have a thin section, it gets thick again, thin again, thick again, it needs to be consistent otherwise it's going to look completely wrong. I'm going to, just in the interest of maybe speeding this up a little bit, I'm going to create another layer, create some smaller branches that come off this, maybe create a cluster of branches up here. Then if I go onto that layer, duplicate it, go onto this, transform it, flip it, I can start to use these branches in different areas, I can double down that layer duplicate it again, flip it, maybe resize it, put it in a different area, attach it to different areas of the tree, and so on. You want to be careful doing that because if you're not careful, you will end up creating patterns that look obvious, but it might be a way of speeding it up a little bit. I'm gonna merge those layers down together, if I can, duplicate them again. just means you've got to be prepared to go in and tidy up any areas that don't look quite right. Just be mindful that you might have created little glitches, bits of the painting that just look a bit strange. So you need to be prepared to, even when you've found a shortcut, to go back into it and keep on working. So again, I'm going to merge those down, duplicate them, flip them. find new areas to apply them and if you're not quite happy with a certain area of them you can just blend in the edges it seems to stop quite abruptly where I've merged them together so I can soften that in a little bit and that helps duplicate it again, flip it, find other areas that I might be able to apply them. Got to use it sensibly. So now if there's areas where it just doesn't make any sense, and I can go and erase some of those bits. Can't just use it slapdash, otherwise it really is not going to make sense for you. I'm just going to get rid of this area, I'm not happy with the way that that looks. I feel like it's interfering somewhat with the scene. So you just got to be prepared to go across it and tidy any areas up that aren't really making sense anymore. Any little anomalies, I can find an area over here that shouldn't be long there. So it's on the top layer, I just go and get rid of some of that. But it speeds it up a little bit. I mean, the only other way of doing it is to do it all completely by hand, which again, like I say, is definitely something that's doable. It's just time consuming just for the benefit of the video and trying to use a couple of shortcuts to get us to the places that are more interesting. But yeah, at the moment it's a little bit untidy in places, but I'm going to accept that for the moment. Now back to my colour scheme. I've got three different colours here. So I've got a grey colour and I'm going to use this now. I say it's a grey colour, it's kind of a contrast or a combination between kind of blue and grey. So I'm going to use this on the top layer and this is now going to be used to pick up some highlights on the trees, where the snow has landed. It might be that it's like a silver birch tree. I've not really researched the actual types of tree for this. So I'm gonna let my imagination sort of combine the two together. So it could be snow that's settled as well as the actual bark texture.
Now, another detail that's going to be important here are shadows cast by the tree. Now, the light is going to be generally coming from this area. So for every tree, we're going to get, I'm going to turn the opacity down on this. We're actually gone for the, the darker tone of the, in fact, no, I'll go for the, the darkest blue on the, it's not quite the darkest blue, but this end of the blue scheme. It is going to show up very nicely on the snow itself. I'm going to use that now to create a sense of maybe shadows coming from the trees themselves. Remember the light is coming from this area, so all the kind of shadows have got to loosely point towards that, almost like a vanishing point. Now the fact that the, the land may undulate and slope in different ways, that means that it might interfere slightly with the direction of the, the shadow, but Roughly speaking, the shadows are going to stem from that light source. Also helps a little bit in selling the illusion that there's a strong light coming from that area. I'm going to go to the lightest of the colours for the tree, and I'm going to use this quite sparingly, but it is going to be used just to pick out some details on the tree there. So it's going to pick up the ambient light. Maybe this is where the snow is most concentrated. I'm just going to use it. It's really going to help pick out some of the details. Maybe the snow that's built up on the edge of there. Might even use it just to bring out some areas of highlights on the snow. Not very much though, in fact I don't like that bit. What I'm going to do is start adding some more of these little things that are growing out of the snow. So these are going to get smaller in the distance, maybe some bigger branches as they get closer to you. Just twigs, little things that are growing out of the snow. I'm going to use the, the red colour and I'm going to go back a few layers. I'm going to use this to really behind the trees. In fact, I'm going to go for a soft airbrush for this. We've got kind of red colours coming in here. So it's a kind of diffuse light on the horizon. It's going to pick up slightly on the snow. In fact, I can have this reflecting on areas of the snow here in the distance. And I can do the same for this slightly more peachy colour. I'm going to go to my most intense yellow colour here. I'm going to go into perhaps even on another layer right on the very top. I'm going to start using this just to pick out some really intense highlights here, I think, in the sky, maybe in this area. So it's just ever so slightly going to cut across the trees. It's going to just nibble away at the edges of the trees there, just because the light is quite strong and it's going to just give a sense there that this. Um, creating a slightly softer look of the trees when it is directly in front of the light. Okay, I'm going to go to the darkest of the blues that I've got for the snow, and I'm just going to perhaps create some texture here. Just going to spend a little bit of time just adding up some little pieces here and there, the branches that perhaps don't make too much sense not caring about the layers at this point, it's just finishing touches. I know that some of these branches aren't the tidiest because I've not gone to great lengths to make them look perfect and creating the overall effect. You might prefer to do tree trunks or trees that don't have anything like the same number of branches. That would make your life a lot easier. I could probably spend about another hour very easily just refining some of the the details. What you probably find is it takes a relatively short amount of time to get the overall effect, but then you can spend a huge amount of time just fine-tuning on any particular image that I've created in the past, almost all of them. The vast majority of the time has not been in major structural elements, it's always been in the fine-tuning. Sometimes that can be a really satisfying, worthwhile thing to get engrossed in, sometimes it can just be laborious and a bit of a pain. I tend to think when it becomes too much of a pain, it's better to stop and try something a bit more creative. But there's a balance, there's somewhere in the middle there where it, it pays off and it, it has value to spend a huge amount of time in it, but there definitely comes a point at which you're better to just try something more creative. I think that's especially true if you're still learning and you, you're not necessarily, you know, producing a piece to go on the wall or to give to anyone or to sell. You're still at the learning stage in painting, really. Sometimes when you're just 
overdoing fine detail. You're not actually doing the sections that are gonna stretch you as an artist. You're not actually learning from it. You're just going through the motions. As soon as you find yourself doing too much of that, really it's time to uh, move on. Okay, in terms of this painting, I'm going to leave it there for now. You'll find the hexadecimal codes down in the description, as I said. You'll also find a link from my Patreon page if you want to support me. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, this video is brought to you by Squarespace. I wasn't going to get involved in sponsorships from any companies or any organisations that I didn't feel were relevant to my subscribers. But as an artist, as a creative person, then having a website that gives you a way of showcasing your work and potentially selling it is going to be really, really important. So I've been looking really with great interest over at Squarespace because I'm, I'm due for a refresh. And everything I've seen over there so far looks really pretty awesome. Designer templates, loads of choices. So I think whatever your style, whatever your creative kind of vision, there's going to be something that suits your work and shows it off really well. You can just sort of log in, you don't need to install anything so no patches or upgrades ever required. 24-7 award-winning customer service. For some of you, if you want to sell your artwork or whatever it is you want to sell, then you can create online stores there as well. So if you want to head over to Squarespace for a free trial and when you're ready to go and launch, you can go to the link that's down in the description and you can save 10% off your first purchase. Okay, hope you've enjoyed this week's video. I shall catch you back here very soon.